So please uh, give a warm welcome to Mr. Tony Arps. Thank you, Lam thank you, Lamont. Your uh, your introduction at least took up two of my slides, so that that well moves right along. Could I get a show of hands of the number of DBs in the audience? Could I get a show of hands of the number of DBs that are currently or have in the past worked on a project with federal transportation dollars? Okay, great. So I got a pretty good audience here. Just who we are, Greg gave me a great introduction. Uh, I'm the project director for the Gulf Region Small Business Transportation Resource Center. We work out of the Os we are under the Osdebu office. Every federal agency has an Os Osdebu office that advocates on behalf of small business to assist them with getting procurement opportunity. Uh, I cover four states, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Louisiana. I've had the good fortune to come to Oklahoma. I've never been to Oklahoma City, but in the last 18 months, I've been here about three times, and it's always a welcoming to come here. Uh, the programs are always great, and you're always a very welcome and warming uh, state, and I'd be more welcome if somebody could find me some Thunder tickets for tomorrow. I would really show how, how you guys are. So, you know, anyway, let's go ahead and go move ahead. We'll skip that side. Uh, we have about four different divisions in the Osbo office. One of them is the uh, Financial Assistance Division. And I'll be talking about that, that product, which is Access to Capital Short-Term Lending Program. We also have our Regional Assistance Division. And that division gives more technical assistance. And that's my office where we work one-on-one -on -one with contractors. Then we have the Procurement Assistance Division. And that's for if you want a direct contract with DOT. And those are a little different because that really involves you actually going to DC and getting a contract with DOT on various projects. The Financial Assistance Division, which is what I'll be talking about, we provide a lot of financial options for companies, DBEs. Uh, what I'll talk mostly about is the short-term lending program, the bonding education program. I'm going to stop here. I know I'm here talking about access to capital, but I can't move from this side without talking about the bonding education program. About four years ago, uh, DOT wanted to identify why DBEs and small contractors were not getting a lot of opportunities on federal highway projects. And one of the things that they, they found, and it was called a barrier, however, in my office, we consider bonding really a challenge. But one of them was bonding. So DOT, Congress allocated a millions of dollars for a bonding education program. And I would like to name change really to uh, business capacity, because really what bonding is all about is building capacity. And when you bondable, you're also bankable. So what I'm talking about with access to capital and bonding, they all go hand in hand. Uh, understanding that I was once a contractor uh, at one time, and like maybe some of you are here, maybe you uh, had capital, more capital when you started, but when I started out, it was myself, a day worker, a truck, and very little equipment. I started growing my business. Uh, it was a landscape business. I had uh, residential. I started being a subcontractor uh, for a prime contractor on some uh, government projects. Then I decided, you know what, I can do this. So I received a uh, solicitation in the mail for the city municipal solicitation regarding landscape service for eight properties. So I had this envelope that was probably about two inches thick. And I looked in there and there was this thing called bonding. And I'm like, bonding, what is bonding? And of course I did one of the things that a lot of contractors do is the first person I thought about was my insurance guy. And in hindsight, I realize now that I probably went to the wrong place initially. Because I noticed when, he was, when I was telling him about bonding, he says, yeah, bonding, that's, that, that's, that's tough. And I noticed he was hedging a little bit. But actually, he was an insurance guy and not surety. And that's what was so important. You need to talk to someone that's a surety person to get bonding, even though there are some insurance agencies that, are, that do a lot of surety. And of course, the next thing I did is I, uh, I went and I tried to find out about the bonding, I found all these different things I needed, and it, I just decided at that point I was not, that's something I was gonna do. And so it was a little discouraging, but that's why our program is there to assist contractors to make that process a lot easier. And then it's always asked, I'm always asked, why bonding? First of all, it's the law for public projects. Second of all, a bondable contract, and I'll be very careful when I make this statement, a bondable, if you're not bondable, you're not a sustainable business. Now, there are contractors that are working with a prime contractor where 
Maybe the bonding is not required because they're the prime, they have the bond. But there's a good chance you could bond that project. But if you go and you find out that you can't get any amount of bonding, that just simply tells you you are not sustainable. And that's what ODOT want. ODOT want sustainable contractors, primes want sustainable contractors. So, so much for bonding. Back to the, back to the PowerPoint. What we do in a lot of the technical assistance, we just provide a lot of different, uh, how to improve your credit, a lot of financial uh, maintenance tips, uh, the technical assistance regarding helping contractors with DBE certifications and things such as that. The short-term loan program, which is what I'm going to talk to you about, it's a, it provides a loan guarantee on a revolving line of credit. The primary collateral for this receivable, for this line of credit, is the receivable. Now, when I say that, the first thing that pops in most people's mind is what? You want to take a guess? Factoring. That's the first thing that pops in mind. When you say something, a collateral has been pledged, such as a receivable, first thing that pops in mind is uh, factoring. And I'll explain later how this program is different from that. The participant in the program, it first initially starts out with a one-year uh, one agreement, then you get those renewed for up to five years. The maximum loan is $750,000, and believe it or not, we have a couple of loans in our office where they have $750,000 line of credit. It can be on any tier as a subcontractor, first tier, second tier, third tier. About six years ago when all this infrastructure projects came down, a lot of small contractors says, oh, that's going to be a lot of work for us. But when you found out that these projects are going to be billion dollar projects, and even some prime contractors were first and second tier subs, you realize that you were going to be relegated to second and third tier. Well, you know what that means when it comes to being paid? That meant that you may have to work, wait 60 to 90 days for payment. And so that was really tough on small DBE contractors. Who can afford a payroll for 90 days? Anybody? Any small DBE? That's a tough, that's a tough one. So any tier of the contract, you can uh, qualify for this. There's an application fee of $150 up front. And I, this is how I'm gonna separate this from, from uh, factoring. The interest rates on this line of credit is 2% above prime. So if we're looking at a $50,000 invoice, you're needing, 50, you're needing money and you have a $50,000 invoice with that line of credit and you need it for, let's say you need it for two weeks, 15 days. That $50,000 line of credit is gonna cost you $3,000 a year is gonna be interest rate, it's gonna be $250 a month. So for two weeks on a $50,000 line of credit, it's gonna cost you $125. If you took that invoice to the bank, to the participating lender, they gave you the money, and you have to pay it back, and you paid it back in 15 days because that's when you were gonna get paid, it would cost you $125. If you took that same invoice to a factor, anyone wanna guess what that would cost you for 15 days? At 1%, let's just say it's gonna probably be about 2%, but at 2%, that's gonna cost you $1,000, okay, for that. It doesn't matter if you need it for two weeks, you could get still have to pay for 30 days. And we all know that when you're in business, when you run out of cash, you're virtually out of business. And there are some DBE contractors, I'm not gonna have anybody raise their hand, but there are some DBE contractors that are factoring invoices, and that's a very expensive way to do business because it takes all your margins away from you. However, you know, one of the things about cash and making payroll, if you can't make that payroll on Friday, you won't have a business on money, on Monday. Back to the PowerPoint. Uh, you gotta be a certified DBE uh, to do this, and there is a couple of other programs that qualify for it. You can be a part of the 8A program, Hub Zone, Disabled Veteran or Service Disabled Veteran. You must have a current transportation related contract. So you must be on a project, with a contract before we even start it, okay? You must be current on federal taxes. That's a must, and that's, sometimes we run into some issues like that. You can't be in a workout agreement, but I put that federal taxes, because sometimes that's one of the biggest issues that stops the application. What it could be used for? Maintenance, rehabilitation, restructuring, improvement, or revitalization, uh, any commercial, any, uh, federal, state, no matter what level it is, if there's DOT money on there, you can qualify for this program. Because there's a lot of municipal projects that have DOT money on it, 
that would, would qualify under this program. It may not be used for contract mobilization, equipment purchases, other long-term use, refinancing existing debt. So if you uh, have a lot of debt and you need, to, uh, need some relief, you can't take that invoice. Once you qualify, you can go get a line of credit and pay it off. Uh, payment of non-current taxes. What, if you have a current tax, once you qualify without any tax liability, but then once, if you do run into a tax liability, once you qualify for the program, you can use this for a current tax liability, okay? And it can't be used if you're a LLC or corporation. You can't use it for, to pay other stockholders. Uh, it's, this program is administered through uh, the OSDVU office, uh, through a, a number of participating lenders. The participating lenders we found are mostly CDFIs, which are community development financial institutions, not your traditional banks like Chase, Wells Fargo. Because many times when you put in the loan package together, when you go to one of those banks and you submit a package, it's gonna be a yes or a no. They're not gonna sit you down and tell you you forgot this, you forgot that, it's gonna be a yes or a no, apply in six months. What we find with the CDFIs, they're more apt to take the package if you're missing something, along with my office, if you're missing something, we'll work with you to help compile that. So we've had very, a lot of success with CDFIs. Now when I mention CDFIs, sometimes, so what pops in your mind too is the interest rate is high. You know, the interest rate's 18, 19%. But with this program, they must, they must follow the federal guidelines of 2% above prime. So if there's, a, there's one such as Axion, Texas, if they're part of the program, if You've been there before, and maybe if they quoted you an interest rate of 14 or 15 percent, as a part of this program, they have to offer this to you at 2 percent above prime. Next slide. And usually, uh, the, the, the turnaround, we have 30 to 60 days, but a lot of contracts hate them. The word I usually tell them, I tell them it's depending on you. If you have a lot of the documentation together and we don't have to uh, get everything together, it could take 60 days, but it really depends on you as far as this process, which comes back to the other thing. You can't wait till you need this money. You can't be on a DOT project and, hey, Tony talked about a, a short-term lending program uh, at the DBE conference, and I really need to make my payroll. You know it's too late for that. For that. It, you must do it ahead of time. And the best time to ask for money and apply for money is when you don't need it. The other thing is I have some DBE contractors that I've talked to, and they're working for a prime who pays them very well. And my question is, if you pay timely, is that the only project? And they say no. They have other projects that are their own that they're being paid slow. So you may want to go ahead, apply for the short-term lending program, where when you have another project that's paying you slow, you're able to have access to capital through that DOT project, okay? So the money you get from that DOT project directly, you can take that and use it to other projects, but when you get that money in for that, that secures that line of credit, you must pay it. So don't wait till you need it. You need to be applying for it like right now if you're on a DOT project. Again, it's, it's borrowed against the, uh, against the invoice. It works. As I mentioned earlier, the invoice is, is the collateral, and that's why we try to make certain we distinguish that between what, what most of us perceive as factoring. We have different, different potential say, lenders, um, Axion Texas, we have a group called People Fund, there's East West Bank, and there's one other that's, that's, that's uh, trying to come to Oklahoma, it's not coming to mind, but I was talking to our uh, financial assistance division, they're working with a lender here in Oklahoma. The way it works, of course, you take the invoice to the bank, if it's $50,000, if you don't need 50, the other different thing about this in fact is if you have a $50,000 invoice and you only need 30,000, you can just get 30,000 and pay interest on 30,000. You don't have to take the entire 50,000, okay? So you take that invoice to the bank, they're gonna probably give you advance you 80, 85%. So a $30,000, $50,000 invoice, you need 30,000, they'll advance you $24,000. When the prime pays, it goes directly to the participating lender, and they will pay that participating lender. He'll take his out and the fees out and then advance the remainder to you. Now, if you're doing a factoring arrangement, uh, if you submit that at the end of the month, if that prime contractor, whoever the contract is, does not pay you, they add another fee to it. 
So you get another 2% added on to what you owe. With a short-term uh, line of credit with the DOT, you just pay, again, another interest rate, another interest payment, which would be $125 for 15 days instead of another uh, $50,000, another two or $3,000. These are some of the steps. I won't go into a whole lot of detail with you, but basically what you do is you complete an application and our office helps you fill it out. Now we do have some, uh, some participating lenders that like to do a lot of the work themselves. They, I have one who says, Tony, you know, I, you guys do a great job, but we're gonna take it from here. And they work with you and they gather the information. Most of them like for us to work with them because what we do is we put, you set up a drop box for you and we put all the information as you get it, as you get the, the personal financials, as you get your balance sheet items, as you get your project information, we put it in a drop box so the lender is looking at it. And my last loan that I had, that's exactly what happened. The contractor, we set them up in a drop box, you know, I would call them, have you got that personal financials? Yeah, I got that, do you have the project list? And they just put it in a drop box till we got everything on that checklist. Back to the slide there. And these are some things that when you're applying for a bank loan, most banks ask for financial records, personal financials, work in progress. That's really what's the challenge on some of these loans. The package we worked is, is trying to get that work in progress together. Aging report, cash flow, uh, certification. Be sure you have that DBE certification. That's, that's really important. And of course, business formation documents. Next. Again, this is the, the checklist continued. There's uh, most of those things we don't have as much of an issue with. Uh, transportation later. Again, this is another slide about the process. Uh, again, the key steps, eligibility. If you want to apply for the short-term lending program, first of all, we need to make certain that there's uh, DLT money on that particular contract. The other thing, uh, and I'll, DLT will tell you, we have to make sure you have a current certification. I mean, that's another thing. Current certification, uh, in, in where I'm at, we're having a lot of issues with certifications. The certification agency are, are behind in certifying a lot of the contractors. So that's so important that you have a contract, of course, first of all, with the funds in, and your certification's intact. Those are two things that have slowed up the process. Uh, complete the application with all the documentation. We'll look at it at my office, or sometimes some contractors like going directly to the bank, we submit that to the participating lender. There's some more contact information. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I think I have a little more time left. Anyone have any questions about the program itself? And this program came out uh, about five years ago. Each year it's getting, as more and more contractors find out about it, it's, uh, it's getting a lot of, uh, lot of interest with, with contractors needing access to capital because we all know what happened in 2008. 2008 forced a lot of contractors to be different types of contractors. Banks have money to lend, but under the guidelines and what they have to do, they really can't lend it to you. And so this pro product works real good for small contractors where we get these non-traditional lending uh, entities to assist in getting capital in your hands. So I'll be around till, uh, I'll be around till tomorrow, that's why I was talking about those, uh, those thunder tickets. I'm not leaving till tomorrow, but I'll be around for the entire conference. If anyone has any questions, this may be the first time you've uh, heard of this before. You can also go on the DOT website, just type in short-term lending program, and it'll give you more details. And again, I'll be around here, and uh, thank you for your attention. Any questions? Okay, all right, great.